<laughs> Hi everyone, Cody here. Welcome back to my laboratory. So you might be able to base off the bubbling bottles behind me that I have been a bit bitten by the algae growing bug. A lot of peace in that sentence. <laughs> it's just such an amazing organism. It's able to take light, just bright, and water, a little bit of minerals, and carbon dioxide, and produce food. I have some chlorella here, which is an edible strain of algae. <clears throat> well, my too much at once there. It's not exactly the most uh, gourmet eating in the world, but it is perfectly edible. It's not terrible or anything. Um, I would describe its taste as being like uh, if you took some grass and ground it up along with some walnuts or something. You know, it's kind of got that uh, fatty proteinness, but is also, you know, there's, there's a lot of chlorophyll. <coughs> In fact, my, my teeth are probably going to be very green. Let's see if I can rinse it down a little bit. Now, of course, land plants are able to produce food from sunlight, water, and nutrients as well. But algae beats land plants in the fact that they're just so much simpler. Like these land plants, like this banana here, it has to stand up against gravity. So it produces a lot of lignin and cellulose, you know, structural compounds to help it stand up. And that takes a lot of energy, you know, cellulose is just linked sugars together. And, you know, it's also got to pump water, it's got to stand up against the wind, it's got to, you know, all sorts of things. Whereas the algae just kind of floats around getting fat. And in fact, that fat is where oil comes from. Like many people might say that uh, crude oil is dinosaur juice. That's not actually true. It, it's actually algae juice. It just happens to be algae that was growing a long time ago. And the earth has processed it over time into the compounds that you pump out of the well today. Now, fortunately for us, I can process the algae and get that oil without having to wait millions of years. Uh, for instance, just by eating it, you know, the enzymes and acids in your digestive system are able to break it down and extract the oils. But I find the most simple method is just to heat it up. So to demonstrate this, I've come outside with some algae in a test tube, and I'm just going to heat it up with a blowtorch. As I heat it, the algae will break down into water, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and various other compounds which produce something similar to wood gas in this funnel in the sink. Now if we continue heating it, we will release more water and oil, which will be vaporizing out. Okay. And you can see some of the oil droplets already forming, condensing on the glass. I'm going to try to capture some of that on a spoon here. Okay, Drive it off. Now you should be able to see the water and oil kind of separating. The water is, of course, liquid still. The oil has solidified into a kind of a waxy black substance here. <laughs> if I remove the water, we should be able to see that it is flammable. See, I just melted the oil again. Heat it up. Well, first, boil off the water, and then start boiling the oil, which catches fire. 
there we go. And of course what's left behind after that heating process is charcoal, which has a number of uses. Not only is algae able to efficiently produce food and fuel, it's also able to make oxygen that I can breathe in from the carbon dioxide that I breathe out. Combining that with its resiliency, its fast growth, and its ability to be pumped around as a fluid, it's the perfect thing for Project Chicken Hole. Now, of course, Chicken Hole will be using greenhouses to grow fruits and vegetables in. You know, gotta have some spice in my diet. But for a bulk of the calories and stuff that I'll be feeding insects and ultimately the chickens, why not algae? <laughs> so I'm going to need to figure out a way to grow a lot of it in a confined system, closed from the atmosphere. You know, I, I can't just have an open pond. And it's got to work year round. So I'm thinking something like a solar panel that drains the algae back into an insulated container at night to protect it from being frozen, which also protects the panel. The material for the panels, uh, you know, it's got to be clear, it's got to be able to let sunlight through, it's got to be able to survive the sunlight for long periods of time, it's got to be completely food safe since I plan on eating the algae. Uh, the best material I can think for that is glass. Now, the thing about glass is it's pretty expensive if I'm not buying it in bulk. So I think for the uh, first uh, prototype, I'm going to use. plastic soda bottles. You know, they're super cheap, I, I can get them for free essentially, and they are food safe and pretty resistant to sunlight. So let's get a bunch of these together, and let's make my first algae pack. I managed to acquire about 100 of these half liter soda bottles that I figure are the perfect size for this project. The first task is to yank off the labels. As you can see, it's not too difficult, and I managed to acquire quite a pile of plastic from this. Now, the labels were stuck on with a little bit of glue, which is not water soluble. I ended up having to use some high proof alcohol to do it. But after wiping it off with a alcohol soaked rag, they ended up being crystal clear. Now, the next step is to cut the tops and bottoms off the bottles. I just used my Swiss Army knife for this, and I only poked myself about three times. And so I was left with a bunch of plastic cylinders. To glue the cylinders together into longer tubes, I used some aquarium sealant, which is just a silicone that is safe for fish and I assume also safe for me. On one end of each of the cylinders, I left a little bit of the rounded portion from the top of the bottle. That way they can kind of fit into each other and form a nice tight seal that holds almost without the help of the silicone. Once the gluing was complete, I was left with nine essentially very long plastic bottles with openings at each end. Now I need to hook these bottles all together into one unit. And for that, I'm going to be using some uh, vinyl tubing to connect between the bottles and some PVC pipe fittings. Once again, using lots of silicone and uh, hose clamps to make everything nice and tight because I do not want any of this to leak. To join the bottles to the tubing, I just put the original cap back on, stuck it in, and clamped it down. Now that of course would seal things off and make the whole thing quite useless, so once the glue was cured, I unscrewed the bottles and then used a drill bit to punch some holes in the cap to let the algae flow through. Now for this, I used smaller drill bits on one end of the panel and then progressively got larger and larger holes as I went to the other end of the panel, and this was just to spread the flow of the algae out more evenly. Otherwise, the flow would be preferentially going through one tube rather than the others. So once that was done, I screwed the bottles back into the adapter, and then uh, prepped the PVC to be glued together to make everything one single unit. So just squish those together, and while that's curing, I went outside and built the frame. This had to be fairly strong because when running, the panel would be filled with about 80 pounds of water. 
but I couldn't make the back solid because that would trap too much heat and especially during the summer would cook the algae. So I used an expanded metal mesh to let air flow through. After giving it a paint job to protect it from the weather, I installed the guts and everything fit quite well. Just minor shipping required. After adding a bit more plumbing on the outside of the panel to let the algae in and out, along with uh, venting the air so that it doesn't form a vacuum and crush the bottles when the algae drains back, I screwed on some clear vinyl siding, which is mostly there to give a little bit more UV protection for the plastic bottles inside, as well as keeping the weather off of them. Next, using a bit more lumber, I give it some legs so they could stand out in the sun. This will, of course, also provide support for all of the additional hardware that goes with the panel. Most notably, the insulated box that will be protecting the algae from the cold. For which I just used a cooler that I cut a hole in the top for the wires and added a better spigot in the side. Now, since it's winter, I covered the metal mesh with some plastic to prevent airflow, just so it can build up a little bit more heat. And then I started to mix up the algae media. Uh, for this is mostly water, a little bit of some minerals, uh, which I've mixed up. I'll probably have to do another video on this particular portion. And then I added the algae culture. This is a true green microalgae called chlorella. It's the same stuff that I ate in the beginning. I ended up with about uh, 40 liters total volume. To this, I put in a bubble stone, and this is mostly to keep the mixture agitated so the algae doesn't all settle to the bottom of the container. Then uh, sealing things up, got all the tubes going in. Yep. Now to do some uh, tests to make sure everything flows properly. Turn it on. Uh, the algae seems to flow in quite well, quite evenly amongst all of the tubes. It takes about five minutes to completely fill the panel. Then once the algae reaches the top, it begins to flow out down and back into the container. Now, as it does so, it mixes with the air and actually pulls air down with it. So this is how it's going to get most of the air and therefore carbon dioxide into the algae. Now, this also uh, agitates it to get the oxygen to come out of solution. Now to unplug it, to make sure everything drains back okay. It's not collapsing the bottles, that's good. Now I need to make sure that everything flows out and the water doesn't plug up the panel uh, because if it freezes at night and there's like a blockage, it's gonna cause a problem. Fortunately, it all flows out just fine. Very little stays inside the panel at night. So then I set up a timer to control the panel so that it only turns on during the day. And I also did some more things like add a air filter to it to prevent uh, contamination from you know, bacteria that's floating around in the environment. I also added a thermometer so I could keep track of the temperature of the algae. And finally I grabbed a sample of the initial algae mixture so that I had something to compare to later. Incidentally, this is the same process that I will be going through when I'm harvesting the algae later on. So I pop the algae sample into the fridge. Side note, I am wondering if I could use the algae to supplement mushroom blocks. Hey, maybe mushrooms could eat it. <laughs> anyway, after a couple of days, the algae is all settled out to the bottom of the container, and I'm able to pour off the clear liquid. The media, now having the algae removed, is still perfectly usable, so I put it back into the algae panel via the air intake. Uh, note to self, make something better for this. The concentrated algae mixture was placed into some spin tubes, which I put into the centrifuge to further concentrate. I placed the super concentrated algae mixture out onto a dish, which I put into the desiccator, and once dry, I scraped the algae up with a razor blade and put it on the scale to weigh out the dried biomass. And here is the finished panel. It's coming out of its first night, which happened to be the winter solstice. As you can see, things are pretty frosty. 
Current temp is negative seven Celsius. Reading right there. The low last night was negative nine. And the current temperature of the algae, 17 Celsius, which is plenty warm for it. It was about 26 when it shut off last night. So it's lost about half a degree per hour, which I think is pretty acceptable. And now I'm just waiting for the pump to come back on. I've got it set for, it's about half an hour from now when the sun is fully up. Well, I hear it running. Algae's in the panel. <laughs> Very nice. I see one problem though. It has gotten very cloudy, so even though the sun's up above the horizon, it's not delivering very much energy. And so the temperature is just falling like a rock. That might be an issue I have to work on. Maybe instead of a timer I need to have like a solar panel and a relay a little solar panel that so it'll only turn on when there's enough so sunlight hitting it yes yes probably one improvement uh, since we're speaking of improvements uh, this hose it's all very exposed and i don't like it so if i build another one of these i'll have to have that more internal that way if an animal brushes up against it it's not gonna break something. So maybe it's not an ideal solution, but it works. See, I've got a solar panel there so that uh, whenever it's daylight, it will turn on this relay, which will supply power to this thermostat. And as long as the temperature is above what I set this, this thermostat will just let the power go straight through and the pump will be able to come on and run the panel. But if it gets cold, colder than this is set at, then that'll turn off and the panel will start shutting down. Let's see, will that come back on? Yeah, it comes back on, good. So I'm gonna set it at about 45 degrees Fahrenheit, about uh, eight degrees Celsius. That's pretty much the minimum I'd want it to run at. And this is gonna be stuck up in here. And of course, when it gets dark, the solar panel will shut off and the algae will drain back. <laughs> I also ended up adding a little 20 watt fish tank heater to the algae box. This way it has a little bit of a positive energy flow, even if it's inside the box for several days. Yeah, I'll just uh, keep watching this. Uh, take samples of algae every now and then to track its progress, to see how much biomass it's able to create. I'm expecting around about 10 grams a day probably less in the winter. Uh, that's just based off of what other algae farms are able to get for a similar square area of sunlight collection. Now you might ask how much of my daily needs does that uh, offset? Like how much of the CO2 that I'm breathing out does that collect? And it's about 2%. <laughs> So I'd probably need about 50 of these panels to produce all the calories that I need to live off of. Which I kind of am planning on doing. But I will need to greatly simplify the design. You know, identify errors and fix them. Reduce cost and uh, reduce the amount of places where algae can catch and get caught inside the panel. So anyway, that's all I've got for now. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.